What are you doing? This isn't a teardown video. Someone else already did that. This strangely flat satellite dish, nicknamed Dishy, is supposedly able to provide a relatively fast internet connection from the stars. Not from the literal giant balls of superheated plasma light years away from us, but from a giant man-made constellation, thousands of Starlink satellites orbiting all around the planet. So what is Starlink? Are these new satellites going to crash into each other or cause some giant cataclysm? And why do I have a dishy? I live in St. Louis. Watch on and find out. Starlink is a new internet service from the company SpaceX, which you may know from its historic rocket launches in recent years. Starlink promises high speeds and low latency broadband all over the Earth, no matter where you are. And if I'm reading their terms of service correctly, they possibly might serve the moon and Mars too. But what makes Starlink special? Well, if you live in a modern city, you probably have decent internet access already. But most ISPs or internet service providers are universally despised no matter where you are. Even if an ISP offers faster service like mine did recently, it's only one way. Today, I pay almost 150 bucks a month for a gigabit of downstream bandwidth, which is pretty good, I'm not gonna lie, but I can only get 30 megabits up. And sometimes I think I have it bad, but do you have any friends living outside a city on the outer edge of a town or in a rural part of town? Ask them to do a speed test. The results will probably shock you. Plenty of people around the globe and even in the US have internet speeds of fewer than 10 megabits and it's pretty spotty when it actually works. If you're old enough to remember dial-up internet, ah, remember that old sound? Or if you remember early DSL, well, a lot of people are still on that level of internet service. To demonstrate just how slow it is, even on a good day, I set my Mac to limit its speed to five megabits and I'll load YouTube. Not so pretty, and some websites and apps completely fail to load if you have a spotty internet connection. People living in more rural locations sometimes also pay for expensive satellite internet service to bypass terrible wired options. But the latency, how long it takes for their computer to talk to other computers, and to do things like play games or scrub through a YouTube video, is even higher so it's a pricey trade-off. That's where Starlink comes in. SpaceX bets that by launching thousands of tiny satellites into low Earth orbit instead of a few massive satellites into a very high geostationary orbit, they can provide faster, low latency internet. And this new attempt to provide internet doesn't just benefit rural communities. People who travel in RVs, live or work on boats, or manage remote facilities are all looking for what Starlink claims to provide. Reliable, fast internet, even well outside city limits. To build their network, SpaceX has been launching satellites into orbit since 2019. Launch after launch, they increase coverage 60 satellites at a time. Right now, as I'm recording this, there are already over a thousand Starlink satellites whizzing around the Earth. Over 12,000 more are still planned to be launched. And if that number makes you worry that we're about to create a WALL-E-like ring of trash orbiting our planet, don't worry, these satellites are all orbiting low enough that they'll deorbit and fall towards the Earth at the end of their life and burn up in the atmosphere on their way back down. And if you're worried about astronomers and stargazers seeing too many satellites in the sky, well, there are some serious concerns there. SpaceX appears to be working with astronomers to find ways to mitigate that problem, and we'll see how that plays out in the coming years. Anyways, enough about what it is. The big question now is, why do I have a dishy? I already explained it's not meant for city dwellers with good enough internet. So that's why I'm out here at Harmon Farms in Jonesburg, Missouri, population 621 at my cousin's house. I'm going to go and see how fast her current internet is. Hi Annie, mind if I come in and check your internet speed? Well I guess we can settle our decades long feud. Come on in cousin. So a week or so ago, I was asking you about your internet speed and it sounded pretty slow. Can you actually do a test on your phone and check how fast your Wi-Fi is right now? Sure. I just so happened to be on an internet speed test website when you got here. This is with nothing else running on the internet right now. 
So is that like the average or like does it get faster ever? It never gets faster. It gets much slower if we are watching a streaming service or if I'm on a, a Zoom call. So it's been a challenge. A lot of times I switch over to my wireless hotspot because it, it gets a more reliable signal. And your husband is here too. Like, can you do things like watch two YouTube things at the same time or is that, is that too much? You can definitely tell when we're both on uh, some sort of streaming site at the same time because it slows things down. One thing that is um, a challenge is if, if I'm trying to work and he's trying to play video games or I'm trying to watch a movie, it's really a, a struggle to get good signal out here. And it sounds like it's also sometimes not reliable. Do you have to pay then for a mobile hotspot and your wired internet? Yeah, I pay uh, the maximum plan for our DSL, and I'm also buying a an extra several uh, gigs of mobile service for my hotspot every month, just so I can stay connected and I have a reliable backup. So what do you use the internet for here? Yeah, so I work for a technology company. I work for Reputation. They're based in the Bay Area, but we've got teams spread all over the place. So whenever we need to collaborate, I've got to be connected. And if my service goes down for a little bit, it makes it more difficult to do my job. All right, so I have a dishy, which is Starlink's satellite. Let's get it set up and see if it could be an answer to your internet problems. I haven't been this excited since Publisher's Clearinghouse. All right, so here is the Starlink box. Here, scoot back just a little bit. It's pretty big. And we'll take a look at what's inside. It has an instruction sheet. It says, don't touch it. So I don't know how we're going to put it outside. And then it says that you plug it into something and then your phone will automatically pick it up. We'll see how easy that actually is. It comes with this tripod, which will let us set it somewhere outside. Um, I also bought a volcano mount that lets you mount it on a roof or the side of a building or something like that. Plus we'll it see. explodes a couple times a year. It's not, it's not like the volcano that's erupting in Ireland right now. Um, everything in the box is connected together, but we're going to disconnect it because you can't really take everything out at the same time. So I guess that's nice of them to do that for us, but we're going to undo all of that. And it looks like it comes with this router, uh, which has wireless and an aux jack. I guess that's for mic input or something. Let's see. No, it's actually an ethernet jack, so you can plug in other devices hardwired. So that's nice of them to include that. Um, and then it has a, ooh, hopefully that didn't break. It also has this power supply, which I guess injects power for the Starlink's motor. And it comes with regulatory notices that nobody cares about except for the FCC. And it comes with this nice long cable, which hopefully is long enough for your house. Um, we'll see if it's long enough for here. And under all that is the actual dish, which we've seen earlier in this video, but it's flat, which is interesting. Most satellite dishes are not flat, but that's because inside is a phased array, which is a bunch of little antennas that can interact with satellites without having the dish move as it's going along. Anyways, I'm going to stick this into the tripod. And we're going to go outside and see where we can put this facing north. All right, so I talked to Annie and it sounds like that direction is north and the sky is pretty clear. So I'm just going to set down Dishy here for now. She can mount it more permanently at some point, and probably should at some point. Um, but I'm going to set it down facing north, and we'll run the cable inside, and we'll see how it works out. All right, so Dishy is set up, and the next thing that we need to do is set up the router and power. Uh, this is like a power brick that powers both the router and Dishy using power over Ethernet, I guess. Uh, but everything is nicely color-coded, which is kind of Starlink to make it easy. The one thing I noticed is this, this router is not, it's not very stable. Um, so maybe you'd put some sticky tape on the back. Anyways, I'm going to plug in the router. If I would plug it in the right orientation, that would work well. Okay. So the router is, should be powering up at this point, And I'm going to plug in Dishy. 
And Dishy at some point should, once it gets connected, orient itself in the right direction for seeing satellites. Looks like the power light on here is on. It's flashing. So the next step is to open up the Starlink app and see if we can get everything else set up. So go ahead and start the setup. And I'm having Annie do this just to show that it doesn't even take a techie like me to do this setup process. Are you saying I'm stupid? Starlink, y'all. <laughs> okay. Right. So go ahead and start, start the setup. Start setup. You don't have to be too uh, sarcastic about this process. That wasn't sarcastic. Even when I'm not being sarcastic, I'm sarcastic. Okay. Start setup. Plug everything in. Did that. Open Wi-Fi settings. Uh, Starlink, look at that. Starlink. How cute. <laughs> Rafi approved. <laughs> So it wants you to set up your Wi-Fi. So go ahead okay. and put in a network name that you want to use. Uh, oh God, this is so much pressure. You so. will now be disconnected from the router. Reconnect using your new Wi-Fi network name and password. Okay. Hey, there it is. Harmon Starlink. Okay, go back to Starlink at the top. Go back to the app? Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, press OK, I guess. Wait while your Starlink connects to the satellites. It looks like Starlink is right now pointed straight up. I don't know um, if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, that's where the satellites are, Jeff. <laughs> I don't know if you know a lot about satellites. I'm a technology person. Satellites are actually above us. You ever look at a map? North. 15 minutes later. So we got everything connected, but this router keeps doing its little flashy white light thing. And in the app, sometimes it says it's connected, sometimes not, and it's been a little spotty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it sit for a while and see if the connection gets more stable. One difficulty is this location is a few miles outside the city where I actually have the service address. So the app even said, you're not in the current service address and things might be flaky here. So maybe it's my own fault, I don't know. Yeah, so it was my fault. Sorry for cutting in, but here's what's in the Starlink beta terms of service. If you move your Starlink outside of its assigned cell, a satellite will not be scheduled to serve your Starlink and you will not receive internet. Thanks, Samantha. And yeah, Annie pointed that out to me too. So my dishy is currently locked into one cell of coverage and I don't know exactly how big the cell is, but it's definitely not big enough to include Annie, who lives 100 kilometers or 60 miles away from me. So I drove back to Jonesburg, said sorry to Annie for getting her hopes up and brought Dishy back here. And before I wrap up this video, I did temporarily set up Dishy in my backyard for one afternoon and it connected within five minutes. I'll have an in-depth review later, but I'm gonna go climb up on my roof and permanently install Dishy in the next video. So subscribe to see how many OSHA violations I can rack up. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. I can't talk, probably because I'm wearing a three quarter length shirt. These throw me off. Hey, mind if I come in and check your internet speed? I mean, you're already stepping in, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's Jeff Gearling from YouTube. <laughs> are you, I come with an Allen wrench? <laughs> are, you, are you recording? Can we get it done? Facing north. So glad I could help. <laughs> And the sanitization wipes, that's very COVID. Y'all come back now.